Hi, my name is Greg with Binstream Customs. Um, we've recently uh, started a fundraiser to buy or build computers or refurbish computers for kids and families who are impacted by the ongoing pandemic and distance learning, or maybe they were laid off, uh, you know, the parents were laid off and they just can't afford to, you know, get that computer that they really need uh, to kind of get that leg up. Um, you know, food insecurity is a real thing, and if food insecurity is a real thing uh, in the U.S., even in Loudoun County, one of the richest counties in the nation, um, then the idea of someone not having a computer at home is a very big reality for a lot of families. Uh, so we want to see what we can do to help. So we're doing a fundraiser. I'll throw the link for that in the description. Um, and so part of it is I want to start exploring what are other options. So we are going to be building computers with this, these funds. Um, there are college kids who rely on their, you know, their school's labs to, uh, get on a computer to do their homework, to study. Uh, and now with everything going online, you know, they're being sent home and they might not have the same resources that they have at school. So we want to make sure that we can give computers to them. Uh, but this is not that video. Uh, this video is exploring another alternative solution. And in this case, the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, I'm not sure if our, my microphone picks it up, but you'll probably hear the fan of it. It is a much lower cost solution, uh, lower performance solution, but a lower cost solution that even if you can't get it from, from me or someone else, uh, really anybody should be able to do at home to, you know, for $150 be able to display something on their screen with a camera and participate in their online classes. So let's get to it. Let's talk about what we're looking at, what we bought, and how it performs. And you'll see that I have a laptop here uh, already in a Google Hangout or Google Meet. Uh, I have the desktop already up on the big screen, but I'll be uh, switching to it. So let's start talking about first what we bought. Um, so it is the Labist starter kit for the Raspberry Pi 4. And the reason we went with the 4 and not the Raspberry Pi 3 is the upgraded processor, uh, mostly. Uh, so you get four large cores, you know, A72 cores, as opposed to, I think, A53 cores in the old one. Uh, so this is a much faster processor. Uh, it's going to give you better performance, and it really is the bottleneck of the system. Uh, and the Raspberry Pi 4 comes in three configurations. So you have a 2 gig, a 4 gig, and an 8 gig. And so I bought the 8 gig to give it the best chance of working, figure out what the bottlenecks are, and then decide, you know, can we go with the cheaper option? And it turns out I think you can get away with the 4 gig option, and I'll show you why. Um, it has um, Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth, it has get real gigabit Ethernet. So the old Raspberry Pi 3 only had uh, it had gigabit internet or Ethernet, but it went through a USB controller on the on that bus. So it was really limited to about 300 megs per second, which is still plenty fast, but it's not true gigabit as opposed to this one, which actually runs on the PCIe lanes of the CPU. So it is at true gigabit speeds. Um, yeah, those are the big differences. The biggest being that upgraded CPU and the ability to get four and eight gig uh, solutions. So let's first pull up what oops, what we bought. Um, so this is the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it can output up to a 4K display. Um, I imagine, you know, the people that probably need this might not have 4K. Uh, all it does is take an HDMI output. So any any monitor TV with HDMI will work just fine. All right, so let's start with the kit we bought. That's the camera module. Here we go. So from Labis, Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig. So we bought the 8 gig at $150. But the um, 4 gig with a, I think, I believe it's 64 gig SD card. Yep. So four gigs of memory, 64 gig uh, SD card, I think is going to be the ideal solution. And I've seen this price right here vary between 100 to 115 dollars. So there's definitely opportunities. Here's the coupon uh, to save 30 percent. So to get it much cheaper, um, the one thing it does not come with is the camera. So let's talk about what's on this Raspberry Pi first. So right here you'll see. Uh, that big silver block right there in the middle, that is the CPU. Um, 
the uh, Ethernet port that top silver square uh, you know I/O is uh, running through that small chip directly to the left of it, and then the USB it has two USB three dot or three dot O's and two USB two dot O um, ports uh, is running through that bottom um, microcontroller right there. Uh, you have two micro display port or micro HDMI port outs, so it can do up to two displays. You have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack and a USB C charging cable, um, and then it has a uh, connection for a ribbon cable for display output as well as camera input. So that vertical uh, connector right there is for the ribbon cable for the camera input. And the one on the left is if you had a uh, ribbon cable for a display. Um, but uh, most people are going to end up using the HDMI. And the Labis kit does come with a uh, that top cable right there is the HDMI output. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. It also comes with a fan. And one of the reasons that that's important is CPUs do generate heat. So it gives you three heat sinks. Um, it's a synth, they're adhesive with a, a thermal interface um, that go on those three chips right there. Uh, or sorry, yeah, those three chips. So uh, they are sized appropriately so you can figure out pretty quickly you know, what goes where. Um, but the user manual does a very good job of um, explaining things. Plus, I'll make a, a video on like what's inside of here later on as well. Um, yeah, and it comes with a power supply. So there's really, uh, it comes with a case with the camera um, housing already built in. Uh, it comes with the SD card. So let's look at the cable. And you'll see there's that ribbon cable that I was talking about. Oops. And there's the camera. It's nice and simple. You don't need to get a lens. It will do 1080p, 30 frames per second. Uh, and that ribbon cable just plugs into that small connector over here um, sorry right there uh, so the one thing that this won't do out of the box with just those two components is your audio uh, for both your microphone and uh, you know sound output so a fairly cheap solution would be something like the uh, you know I, I searched kids Bluetooth headphones uh, these have both you know audio and a microphone output it will probably work fine. I haven't bought these, but for 20 bucks, it's, you know, not a huge investment to, you know, allow the kid to really focus on, the, you know, just the audio from their class or whatever they're doing on the system, as opposed to, you know, being distracted by all the noises in the house. Um, and let them feel like, you know, they have something premium. They have wireless headphones and they'll be able to link these to, you know, any other mobile device that they have as well. Uh, so it's a... Nice, inexpensive solution um, to the problem. So if you don't like those, there are a lot of other options. So just search kids Bluetooth headphones, pick one with good reviews, try to watch some YouTube videos on it. But yeah, it's going to work. It's going to work. All right. Oh, and this one has built-in FM radio. Neat. All right. So you'll see I have a bunch of tabs open, including one video chat. Hi. Um, and, you know, I wanted to do this for two reasons. One, I wanted to show you that Google Meet works uh, kind of flawlessly. So this does come with a Chromium browser. So not Chrome, but Chromium, which is the base for Chrome and the new Edge. Um, and, you know, others like the Brave browser. Um, we will get into a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to call my wife, Lauren. Uh, on Zoom, which is what she uses for a lot of her classes with her students for uh, violin and viola. Um, and I will show you a couple other things. So for one, I want to see how hot my CPU is running um, because, you know, it's rated to run up to 85 C. Uh, so 85 degrees C. Well, that's why we have a fan, right? And I kind of want to show you the reason. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to open up the terminal here. And we're going to paste this command in. And so what it's going to do, like it looks, it's going to measure the temperature. And we are running, I think it says 46. Yep, 46 degrees C, uh, which is, you know, great. Uh, the CPU is not going to have any problem at that temperature. Uh, and what we're also going to do is run, and we'll make this window a little bigger. 
a command called htop. And what it's going to do is show your CPU um, usage, your memory usage, uh, so you have a good idea of, you know, how hard am I hitting the system. And the reason I wanted to, you know, really use this command is I want to look at memory usage, right? Do we need to pay the extra $50 uh, to get the 8 gig version, or is the 4 gig going to be fine? And uh, we'll just minimize that guy. Looking at it with all these up here, uh, including a video stream, you know, our CPU is working pretty hard, but it's not at 100%. Um, but our memory usage is, you know, we're only hovering around one gig. So the four gig should really have no problem. The bottleneck is definitely the CPU. So you're not going to be wanting to do a whole lot other than participate in your video chat. Um, because it is really working that CPU. However, it is functional. Um, so it's nice, right? It, it works. It's an inexpensive solution. If you already have a TV, all you have to do is spend the hundred or so dollars for the Raspberry Pi kit, another $26 for the camera and about 20 bucks for headphone microphone combo. And, you know, so out the door, you're looking at what is that? less than $150 for a full functioning computer that a kid can use for distance learning that you can put together in the comfort of your own home. Um, it's pretty simple. It's four screws to screw the board down into the case. Um, you just connect one ribbon cable and uh, you know, plug in your HDMI cable like you would anything else. Plug in your keyboard and mouse. That's one thing we forgot, keyboard and mouse. But I will show you that keyboard and mice uh, does not have to be expensive. You'll see, I just searched Bluetooth kids headphone. Uh, so let's look, uh, keyboard and mouse. And it gives you an idea, and we could actually look at our usage. You know, doing that search brought our CPU usage on all four cores up to that, you know, right up to 100%. Uh, so it's not the fastest system. But... It is a functional system. And at this price point, I think that's more important. Uh, so you'll see you could have anything. Oh, you could have an RGB gaming one you know, combo with a mouse pad for $28. Um, but I believe there's yeah, $18 for Amazon Basics, uh, you know, $27. There are definitely options out there. Um, you know, get what you want for your kid. Uh, maybe they'll... You know, you'll inspire them to uh, get into computer gaming if you get them the RGB or, you know, you'll make their day and you're not spending a lot of money. Uh, chances are, it even says res Raspberry Pi. Does that really say Raspberry? Yes, it does. You got to love China. But at the end of the day, it's going to make your kid smile. Uh, but if you want something that's going to work, maybe get something uh, a little more name brand that's still inexpensive, like the Amazon Basics. Though I've had the Amazon Basics keyboard, or I have the Amazon Basics mouse, just fine. I did buy a five dollar keyboard, and it is god awful. So spend more than five dollars, but you don't have to spend more than twenty. Um, so yeah, uh, so we can go through. Let's uh, look at our temperature again, see if it's changed at all. We are now at forty seven, so we're just staying stable. This fan's doing everything it needs to do. We do have it set to the high setting, so it is a little noisy. Um, but you know what? That's fine. So we don't need this open. We don't need Amazon open. So we'll close these things to give us our, our best chance of working. We're going to keep zoom open. We can actually close Google meets because we showed that it worked. So that's cool. Close that. And then I'm going to show you some of the other features that come with Raspbian, which is the, uh, operating system. It's a Linux operating system that runs on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so you do get an office suite, so you get um, LibreOffice, so Calc is your Excel, um, Impress, I believe, is your uh, PowerPoint, uh, Writer is your uh, Microsoft Word, um, we can open that up, you can watch your CPU usage, it actually isn't beating it up too bad, and our memory is at a, a very reasonable level. So let's see where we're at. 
Um, we're still under a gig, so I think the the eight gig or the four gig version is going to be just fine. Again, the bottleneck it really is that uh, CPU, but it looks just like Microsoft Word. You could type whatever you want. Um, yeah. You also get um, a bunch of programming capabilities. So if you have a child who is looking into to getting into programming, it has a bunch of built-in features that's really going to make it a little easier uh, for them to get in um, at a bunch of different age groups. Uh, so it comes with some really nice features like Wolfram and Mathematica that uh, if your kid's going into engineering that they will definitely be taking advantage of. Um, you get Chromium, uh, Sound and Video, it does come with VLC Media Player already installed, so that'll be able to play most media formats. Uh, you get an image viewer. You also get some games, uh, including Minecraft Pi. So it is a version of Minecraft designed to run on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it's a very cheap way to get into Minecraft. But we will open Boeing. I was playing this a little bit before, and I'm very bad at it, which is very embarrassing. But we'll show you what it looks like, and you can monitor you know, CPU usage and how even this single-threaded game really beats up that CPU. Yeah, boy. So, I am much better at regular computer games, I swear. And if I ever stream games, you should totally watch unless you don't like swearing. Alright, that's enough of that. And let's look at what else it comes with. Uh, so games, you get a couple other games. We're not going to get into those. As well as some accessories like a file manager, PDF viewer, uh, a task manager if you need to end tasks. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, you can, it comes with a bunch of preloaded um, backgrounds. But if I'm giving it this pie to you, there's going to be a Bitstream's Customs logo in the background. Uh, so just be prepared for that because I have to get my logo everywhere. But we'll, we'll stick with the Raspberry Pi logo because that is really blown up. <laughs> um, but essentially, that's the Pi. Oh, I didn't actually show you how big it is. So I'll let you look at it. It's plugged in right now, so I apologize. Uh, but this is it, right? So your camera's right there. Uh, this is a fan vent, not a speaker. Um, you have your USB ports and Ethernet port on the top. You actually have a mount, so you can mount it to like a uh, uh, tripod for a camera. And then on the other side, you have your two um, micro HDMI, your USB-C for power, as well as your headphone jack. And then I just had this sitting on my desk leaning against my second monitor uh, for that video output. But yeah, so I'll... Uh, Throw some Zoom video up here showing you that it works. I'm going to go get my wife, tell her to log in and invite me to a meeting. Uh, as well as I'm going to log into some other um, common, you know, distance learning websites and show you how that looks. So I'll be right back. We'll get Zoom up. All right. So we have the Zoom client up. So uh, let's get to it. I'm going to show you the steps that you need to do because it's not you know, exactly straightforward on what you have to do. Um, not like you would on a normal normal PC. So you get this uh, pop-up for open xdg-open. You're going to want to hit cancel. Then you're going to want to hit join from your browser. You'll be able to select your name. You hit join. Hopefully she hasn't jumped out because she can't actually hear me. The meeting host will let us in. So you're going to see my beautiful wife who is already ready for bed because it is much later than I think she wants me to be doing this. Uh, but I do this for you. So we'll let this load, start my video. And because I don't have a microphone or headphones, so say hi. You're being recorded that you can't hear me. Say hi. Say hi. Nope. But at the end of the day, you see that Zoom does work. Uh, <laughs> So there you go. Um, from here, uh, let's uh, pull open some of the more popular uh, apps. So we're going to close this. I don't think she wanted to be on camera anymore. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open up the uh, other web pages. I have to pull them up on my phone, which I use as a camera here. Uh, so we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So I have two cousins or three cousins that are elementary school teachers. And so I had reached out and I said, hey, when you're doing distance learning, what websites are you using? Are you using, and I was more focused on the, uh, you know, video chat. I wanted to make sure that that was going to work. Um, but then they said, hey, just so you know, uh, we use these other sites that don't always work on everyone's computers uh, or all their browsers. So you should really check those out. Uh, so they said it was iReady.org and RazKids.com. And I'm glad they told me this because if your kids are using this, this might not be the best solution for you because it looks like both websites do not actually load in Chromium. I don't. Uh, I think they need to be run on um, Edge or even Internet Explorer. Uh, so please keep in mind that this is a limitation or a drawback that you don't have the full functionality as you that you would in a normal PC. Um, so if you know that your child uh, or yourself are going to be using any of these websites that are critical um, to your use case, uh, let me know. I can always run it again, you know, try to log into it on, on this one here. Um, and we can make sure that it's, you know, what you want to do is going to work because both in this case, iReady and Raz Kids do, excuse me, do not work. So keep that in mind that there are going to be some drawbacks and limitations to uh, this solution, uh, which is a little unfortunate that, you know, the base Chromium can't load these uh, web pages. But you'll see here um, with them open, uh, we're only at about uh, 500 megs of, of memory. Uh, so let me show you what kind of this looks like. So we'll try to load CNN. We'll load Fox News. We'll load... Daily Wire will load Amazon all at once. So you'll see that it is not the fastest system. Um, go to Fox News, we'll see how different they all are. Daily Wire is going to be different. And then Amazon just wants you to buy things. The good guy, right? Anyway, uh, so there you go. That's about what I got for you with uh, this Raspberry Pi. If you're interested, I can do a build guide. Uh, there are a couple commands you need to run to update it once that once you have it plugged in, powered. Um, it's very, very straightforward, very simple. I am happy to do it. I can give you a walkthrough guide of how to actually put this thing together. If this is something that you personally want to do, just let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please, again, the link for the donation is in the description of the video. I'm going to be posting this to both YouTube and Facebook. So if you have the means to donate, uh, please do. Any leftover funds that we have are going to, you know, is going to be donated to a nonprofit that supports families in the Northern Virginia area. I'm not sure if it's going to be Mobile Hope or if you have suggestions of a good charity that can the uh, remaining funds at the end of this can go to. Uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, take that into consideration. Uh, the whole point of this is just to just help families. So uh, please share this video. Let me know what I can do to help. If you are a family in need, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to local charities to try to identify families that could use this kind of support. Um, so as we move forward, uh, depending on the funding, we have about $400 raised so far. It's been less than a week. Um, and I haven't done a great job of advertising, so I'm hoping this video will help. Um, but at the end of the day, we just want to be here to help the families. Um, I've been fortunate my whole life to, uh, not have to rely on this kind of support. My family's always been able to give me what I need for my education, but I know a lot of families aren't that way, especially growing up in Northeast Ohio. Uh, it is not Loudoun County there. Um, there are school districts who struggle to get by on a normal day, let alone, uh, during this pandemic. So, uh, we are going to be reaching out to school districts there, um, should we have the means to do so, uh, to see if there are families up there we can help as well, because it is near and dear to my heart. But please, please donate. Um, we just want to help. If you are, again, family in need, you know someone in need, have them reach out. Um, and it's not just for kids, you know, college students. If you're an adult, you're out of a job, library's closed, you can't get to the library to use the computer. Um it's hard to do everything on your phone to apply for jobs. 
we will be happy to donate a computer to you as well. Um, we want to help keep people get back on their feet and give them that leg up that they need. So thanks for watching.